Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As right now, my friends, we are in the calm before the storm. We are in the greatest moment to be a crypto investor. We are in the moment where a lot of people who are crypto rookies just getting into the market in 2024 can claim their stake, invest in high quality coins before they hit all time highs and not have to wait that long. We are in a confirmed bull market with the Bitcoin ETF approval and with Ethereum ETFs. Likely more ETFs will come like Solana and XRP, for example. But right now is the little pullback before the slingshot effect and an old coin season. As here, we have one of my favorite crypto analysts, Credible Crypto, showing his analysis and his prediction for the market. He drew a red squiggle that manifested as part of his previous analysis, him claiming that he, we were going to see a pullback in the market before we saw another uptrend in the Bitcoin price chart. And right here, this was a previous chart showing that this was exactly what he thought was going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the best analysts in the world have been pinpointing this market favorably over the past couple weeks. And the closer and closer we get to the altcoin season we all expect, the more price confirmation we are getting. Ladies and gentlemen, there's exactly 0% concern in my eyes over what's about to come next. The crypto market is full-fledged moon mission ready. And every single one of you needs to be extremely excited about it. Now, in addition, something he's also hypothesizing is Bitcoin being at around 100k while Ethereum chills around previous all-time highs. And the reason this is important is because the altcoin market typically lags behind a little bit before going on a moon mission and typically we do see Bitcoin lead the show. That is the unfortunate reality of being an altcoin investor. You guys have known I've been a predatory altcoin investor for a long time now, with a third of my portfolio being XRP and two thirds being in other altcoins. So typically we have to wait for Bitcoin's confirmation before truly making a lot of money. But once Bitcoin does give us the confirmation, the rest is set in stone and then we can make extreme ROI. And I think what we're about to see coming next is a true fireworks display. I've long stated, I believe XRP moves last in bull markets, but it moves the fastest and the highest once it does. And yet again, XRP is doing exactly that pulling back below 50 cents right before the next uptrend. XRP does like to move last. We've seen great returns on Bitcoin and ETH and other alts already. And if you are a stoic investor and understand how these cycles work, you can take advantage of XRP's price suppression, make ROI from your other coins, and funnel that in XRP while it likes to lag behind for maximum multipliers on your capital. This is the way the strong survive. This is the way the true savages in this market operate. Because if there is one thing I can confirm to all of you, it's that the best analysts are all confirming the same thing. We have weathered the storm of the crypto bear market and generational wealth and a bullish cycle is about to be upon us. BC Backer posted this as well the other day. And if there's one thing I have left to say, it's hold on to your hats. Things are about to get spicy and Ripple just revealed the future for XRP and how XRP is going to give us generational wealth at their Apex conference. Here, what you see on the screen is how 
quite frankly, the XRP ledger, as well as institutional private side chains, the XRP ledger EVM smart contract side chain, a custom chain, tokenized assets are all going to give us the perfect storm for XRP price appreciation. A lot of people, all they do is ask when moon. Well, what I just showed you on the screen is how moon. This is how we're going to moon. The end of the XRP case is not what's going to send us into the stratosphere. What's going to send us to the stratosphere is this. And I can't stress that enough. And here, what I'm doing for all of you is showing how the convergence between the macroeconomic environment and the crypto space is going to happen as today. Larry Fink talked about how the G7 average debt to GDP is 129%. And no matter how much we tax, no matter how much we cut or reduce the debt, it won't be enough. They're building a new infrastructure, especially through public-private partnerships. And at the center of it will be tokenization of assets crypto adoption, and the XRP perfect storm. The IMF and the World Bank were created 80 years ago when banks, not markets, financed most things. Today, the financial world is flipped. The capital markets are the biggest source of private sector financing, and unlocking that money requires a different approach than the bank balance sheet model of yesterday. There is still a lot of work to be done, but reform over the past eight months have resulted in billions of dollars of new dollars for the developing country's infrastructure. That's what you saw last week with the announcement of the Investor Coalition. BlackRock, GIP, KKR, and other major firms will deploy $25 billion in Asia's emerging economies. In a way, it's an Indo Pacific counterpoint to Italy's Mate plan, which is helping African economies grow, and that's important. Every country in the world needs a growth strategy. But if I could convey one more important message today, it would be the countries that need growth most right now are not just emerging economies. Great economic powers, including the G7, are in fact on the list and need growth going forward. All of us are staring down a growth dilemma. Whether we solve it or not, it's a significant economic fork in the road for our countries. Today, the G7 average debt to GDP is 129, 129%. No matter how much we tax, how much we cut or reduce that debt, it will not be enough. The only way we can achieve this future of growth is by truly growing out of it. But just growth is becoming more important because we need to be focusing on our fiscal health. It is also becoming much more difficult to achieve. Within 25 years, most of the G7 countries will be a dem on demographic downslope. Working age population will decline. The ceiling on growth will get lower and lower. This is why building new infrastructure is critical, especially through public-private partnerships. Infrastructure investments is a counterforce to the high debt, low growth economies. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to go along with the private public partnerships that are being discussed here right now, ArcAX chose the XRP Ledger and Hedera as part of their tokenization engine to bring real world assets on chain. These are two of the best enterprise grade DLT solutions in the industry. Hedera, ArcAX, BlackRock, Medico, Ripple, all in tandem are helping with this solution to this major problem. And right here, right now, my friends, you have to remember that tokenization meeting and tokenization conversation Larry Fink had on CNBC, I believe a month or two ago. The tokenization of real world assets is coming. HBOR and the XRP ledger are going to play a pivotal role in that. That's why these two coins are my biggest investments in crypto. And I think this bull market we're about to see what everything under the hood truly is about. I know 
all you guys want to hear about is this new collaboration between Artrex and Ripple. So let's get into uh, the heart of that. Um, what does it mean more broadly? Uh, and also, what does it mean specifically for you know, all the XRPL users and developers here in the room? Why should everyone care? What do you expect to see in terms of you know, types of assets and issuers on XRPL 12 months from now? Yes, we, um, it's part of the challenge that we've had is that working with the traditional players is a challenge. So we've kind of gone down the route of build everything yourself. Um, so we've got the custodian and the exchange. And the bit that was really obviously missing for us um, was the tokenization bit. Now, there's quite a few tokenization platforms out there, and we gladly work with all of them. But as they all char charge per issuance, and you know, I'm doing things like tokenizing the S&P 500, it costs you a fortune if you work with, with third parties. So we decided to build our own tokenization engine. Um, and within that, we built the functionality we think is needed for securities. Um, and we've known the Ripple XRP old team for some time now. Um, and we've always kind of liked the technology uh, as well. So we've decided to implement it into our tokenization engine. Um, so what that, means, um, what that means in terms of a product is everything we're doing is available on XRPL. So every security that's already available through us. So we've already tokenized UK equities, UK gilts. Um, Aberdeen own us. We've tokenized their money market funds and BlackRock as well. Got, they're all available on, on our platform now. Um, and more specifically to the community, hopefully it means we're kind of more of a useful partner. So we already have XRP trading on our venue, so people can trade that in its simplest form. But if people want to create tokens on XRPL, they can do it with us. If they want to create securities, they can do it with us. If they want to custody them, we use Ripple Custody, um, formerly Metico, um, which is now all embedded within our system. So hopefully those that are looking to really work on the digital security space can partner with us and have easier access to, to RWA. And also integrating uh, some of the assets that will be issued on the XRPL in the infrastructure and the ecosystem uh, of the XRPL ledger, obviously. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anyone that's building on it um, can gladly work with us. I mean, we, you know, we literally have the custody and the exchange. We can admit these things for trading, whether they're crypto or securities. Um, we've got a license in the UK. We're applying for another one in Europe at the moment. Um, you know, we've got, uh, we're able to distribute into a number of countries. We're a qualified custodian in the US. So anyone working on securities who's looking for a regulated partner, hopefully we can help out there. Awesome. And that right there is fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, the XRP Ledger ecosystem just continues to grow. And a powerful compliment that I've always been telling all of you about since day one is the Flare Networks and CEO and co-founder Hugo Fillion just gave a massive update as to what the last couple months has shown. Here, the kinetic lending platform from Rome Blockchain Labs. They have Rain Lane, an innovative intense like Dex. They have the launch of their first native stablecoin USDX by Hex Trust. They've launched their first real-world assets protocol by Clearpool, on-chain treasuries, and 11 million TVL within five days. They launched their first liquid staking protocol on Flare. They're having ongoing upgrades of Flare's price oracle to FTSO version 2, enabling a thousand price series with one block updates. And finally... They've launched Flare Labs F Assets Protocol and Open Beta on Songbird. I know to a lot of you that's a lot of gibberish and technological jargon. But what's truly important for all of you to know is that we, the XRP community, received the Flare token absolutely for free. We have had a long time now to delegate and compound our rewards. We've also had the opportunity to re-up on Flare at under a penny. As I've been recommending on my OnlyFans at OnlyFans.com slash The Bearable Bull. And at the exact same time, f -Sets are about to launch. It's the only bridge for Bitcoin XRP Doge and other non-smart contract tokens that is secured through direct collateralization to have smart contracts. And it's very important that all of you realize that this is going to be one of the biggest passive income opportunities of our lifetime. Now here, Thinking Crypto had CEO of Flair Hugo on his channel for a quick interview. And here Hugo explains how massive F assets are about to be. I got a lot of questions from the community. I have questions for myself. Um, maybe we can start with 
the launch of the open beta for F assets. Tell us about that. Cool. So for any new listeners, let's let's define what F assets are. Sure. Um, so we, we you know we're working on things called F XRP, F BTC, uh, to name a few. There are obviously other potential F assets. Um, but we're focusing on FXRP and FBTC. So what, what is that? Really, F assets is a bridge. Um, it's a bridge to be able to use your token from those networks, which do not have smart contracts uh, on Flare uh, with smart contracts and therefore with dApps like, uh, you know, DeFi. Uh, and also for payments, you know, you could do uh, uh, payments, for instance, uh, perhaps less applicable to XRP, but certainly applicable to Bitcoin, uh, you know, very cheap, very fast payments uh, as well. But being able to use your XRP or your Bitcoin in, um, in DeFi, uh, you know, is a, is a valuable reason. Um, but really, there are other bridges for these kind of things. Why, why F assets? Uh, well, F assets is the only bridge that has been built with verifiable economic security. Uh, everything else um, is, is sort of re relies on a form of trust, or you can't really at any time fully understand the economic security. So that's that's F asset. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the genius behind what Flair and Hugo have built cannot be understated, and I think. After the years of suffering the XRP community have gone through, or about to reap our just rewards. Now guys, to cap off this video for today, I'm going to leave you with Gary Gunsler and CFTC Chair Rostin Behem discussing crypto regulations. And Gary Gunsler yet again gets grilled. I believe it's important that all of you stay informed on the regulatory landscape that's about to happen in the crypto space and conversations like this happening in congress are exactly what we need to pay attention to keep your eyes on the prize my friends a regulatory framework is about to come ladies and gentlemen this is the bearable ball here thanks for tuning in if you haven't done so already, please buy your offline hardware wallets to protect your crypto against any and all hackers, as I believe there's going to be a moment in time very soon where you're going to be really happy you didn't have it on an exchange, where you're going to be happy you didn't have it on a warm wallet like Exodus. Technologies like this protect you from any and all scammers. And I highly recommend you get yours in the description below. As always, guys, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. We all are very aware of the fact that there's a big debate going on on, on Capitol Hill right now um, regarding whether these things are fish or fowl and which agency should have jurisdiction, but I would hope that we would all be able to agree on a couple things, which is that we want to protect consumers and the public, number one. Um, and number two, however we move forward, we deal with the um, anti-money laundering equivalent part of this, making sure that these assets cannot be uh, used uh, for nefarious purposes. So uh, again, our, our House subcommittee counterpart included a provision uh, Chairman Gensler, regarding regarding SEC crypto regulation, uh, and specifically, it reads: uh, none of the funds made available by this act may be used to carry out an enforcement action related to a digital asset transaction, except for enforcement actions related to fraud or market man manipulation, unless and it goes out and sets out some conditions. Could you uh, speak to what the consequences uh, would be with respect to the goal of protecting consumers and the public uh, if this were adopted? It, it would be seriously undercut our efforts. Um, while not all crypto or crypto securities, um, some are <laughs> under Chair Benham's uh, jurisdiction, um, those that are have an obligation to disclose to the public it's called a registration uh, to disclose to the public full, fair, and complete information. We'd lose that. Secondly, intermediaries, so-called exchanges, broker-dealers, and the like, register, and then the public gets protection. For instance, a really key protection is that your funds are segregated 
and protected. And um, uh, so our securities laws are not solely about fraud manipulation. Stamping out fraud manipulation is really important, but it's also about if you register, in this case, a crypto security token, you have to then give disclosure so the investing public gets the benefit of that. If you register a crypto broker or crypto exchange, you get the benefit of things like segregation. You get the benefit of a rule book on the exchange like we have on, let's say, the New York Stock Exchange. There's a lot of benefits. But it would also undercut ongoing current cases that we have in front of courts right now. Uh, and we've been very successful in a number of these cases where, at least on the law, uh, on motions to dismiss and so forth, uh, the judges have found we've got the appropriate reading of the law, and then they'll move on to the, the fact part of the cases. So just to be clear on that last point, this would interfere directly in ongoing cases? It would interfere directly on ongoing uh, cases that we have in front of various circuit, uh, various district courts. Thank you. So, uh, Chairman Benham, um, I mentioned the importance of making sure that um, these assets, currencies, cannot be used for nefarious purposes and the need to apply the equivalent of the anti-money laundering standards uh, to these, these um, assets, regardless of how we decide to treat them. Would you agree with that? And what, what measures should we use? Should we just simply apply existing uh, AML uh, provisions to these, uh, these currencies? Uh, Senator, thanks for the question. You know, for, from a CFTC perspective, and as I've said publicly um, for many years now, it's a, it's a legal authority issue. We, to Chair Gensler's point uh, in the earlier question, have anti-fraud and anti-manipulation authority for digital commodity assets. So we've been quite successful over the past 10 years, really, in bringing enforcement cases. But the weakness that we have, or the shortcoming, is that we have to rely on folks coming to us providing tips and complaints. We don't have those traditional regulatory tools, registration, custody, surveillance, oversight, that have really made American capital markets and derivatives markets so strong. As it relates to AML KYC, um, again, it's a legal authority issue. If, if Congress were to move on some authority for the CFTC, Certainly, that would be a key component of this, given what we've seen and experienced in this digital asset space around AML and KYC. I don't think we need to stray too far from existing law. Uh, a lot of AML, KYC uh, enforcement is conducted through the Treasury Department. We work very closely with FinCEN on certain authorities we have, but it is limited in scope. But I would think you know, the current fin uh, AML, KYC structure um, at a bare minimum is adequate. I do think the technology would require some rethinking of how we need to consider um, uh, both anti-money laundering and know your customer. 